Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the FA-18C Hornet. It's 21st of May 2021 and we now have the AGM 84H Slam ER available. The cost of each missile is around $3 million. The maximum range of the missile is 155 nautical miles. The warhead is an 800 pound high explosive warhead. We have two targeting methods, pre-planned or target of opportunity. Like the JDAM and the JSAL, pre-planned can be entered with lat long assuming we already know the location of the target. Target of opportunity allows us to designate a target via different means, for instance, on a waypoint or through a teapod. There are two terminal guidance methods. One, a fire and forget type method using INS GPS similar to JSAL or manual guidance using a terminal IR sensor. We also have the ability to add intermediate steer points to create flight paths for each missile. You can have the missile on pylons 2, 3, 7 and 8 totaling 4 missiles. If we want to use the terminal IR seeker method we also need the data link pod. We can have that on pylons 5 or 2 or 3 or 7 or 8 and we only need one of those. For this tutorial I want to show you pretty much everything we can do with this missile. I want to show you pre-planned, target, single, ripple, auto terminal and manual terminal. So to do that we're going to do two missions. The first mission is a pre-planned direct to target with INS GPS terminal phase with a single missile shot at maximum range of missile. The second mission will be target of opportunity firing designated via waypoint, adding in steer points to the flight path of the missile, using Datalink IR manual terminal guidance with a ripple firing two missiles at a range of around 70 nautical miles. Let's fly the first mission. We are armed with one SLAM ER. Our target is about 160 miles away at this airbase here. It is a static target of a known location. It's going to be this building here. We need to know the lat long of this building here. Please look at the top left of the screen. You will see the MGRS coordinates. Press left, alt and Yankee to cycle to eight digit decimal seconds. There is northern easting eight digit decimal seconds including elevation above mean sea level in feet at the end. I'm going to write that number down now on my kneeboard. So master arm on air to ground mode. Select the slam ER. Mode is already in pre-planned so we can leave that there. Note the alignment timing is the same as the JDAM and JSAL. Once it's timed down to 7 minutes and 30 seconds it's aligned and ready to go. You cannot fire before that. Let's select the flight altitude of the missile for the cruise. It shows down here. Medium 15,000 feet high, 35,000 feet low, 5,000 feet. I'm just going to go high because we've got no threats to the missile. Set electronic fuse currently off. We can now change it to instant. Distance is 10. We can change that later. Do not click on erase slam. That will erase the memory of the missile in case, for instance, you need to jettison them. Next, steer points. Do we want to add steer points to the flight path of the missile? No, not in this scenario. It's going direct to target. Step allows us to step through different stations, irrelevant as we only have one station. Next, I'm going to fast forward just to show you what it looks like when it's aligned and ready to go. 7.30, Slam ER is aligned and ready there, and ready there. Next, Slam Display. So from here, we're going to set the release type to be manual. It should be defaulted as manual anyway, but just to double check. For this particular mission, I don't want to change anything else, so let's go through to mission. We currently do not have a target set up, so that's what we need to do. So, target UFC. We're going to set the lat long with position, latitude, north, two, seven, zero, nine, two, nine, enter, and then the decimal seconds as a zero, enter. Check here, northing, two, seven, zero, nine, two, nine, dot, eight, zero, done. Long. Easting, five, six, zero, nine, five, six, enter, two, three decimal second, enter, check, five, six, zero, nine, five, six, two, three. We now need to change the altitude, so I'm going to go back into their elevation, meters or feet, feet, 51 above mean sea level, enter. All good there. We know that we've got a valid target because PP1 here has unlocked. One more thing to show is that like JDAM or a JSAL, we have terminal properties for the missile as well. I'm not going to do them here, but we can decide which heading we, the missile will attack the target from to 
avoid a building for instance at which angle we want the missile to strike 90 degrees you know straight down zero degrees along the ground 45 degrees that kind of angle and the velocity the terminal velocity of the missile if we want to decide that for some reason but we're not going to change anything here on the mission page we can see the terminal parameters we've set there which is nothing we can see the targets location data there we've got station three on pre-planned one and it's a slam er that weapon is now set up on pre-planned and ready to fire next to the hud we can see we've got zero minutes 53 seconds time to maximum release so when that reads zero we can release the weapon we've got a slam er selected it's not crossed out so it has a valid target and we're in pre-plan mode the target is 151 nautical miles away down to our hsi it's a little difficult to see but that is us there this massive ring is representing the maximum range at which we can fire the missile so once our aircraft reaches within that big circle there we can fire it is just a graphical representation of this guy here now there's nothing really else to it unpause you'd usually do this without pause obviously but it just helps me for the tutorial head towards the target we just need the weapon release button to actually fire the weapon to speed up time now within parameters to fire at 145 miles in this case and we will fire the weapon now, as we're using a fire and forget method, I'm going to prove that we're using a fire and forget INS GPS method by turning around. I'm going to have no further link with this missile at all. I'm going to bump my autopilot on. Autopilot on. ATC on. And we're going to follow the missile. So, 145 miles. Off he goes. What a long range missile. That's ridiculous. And there's our building. There's our Zach building look. Zap, zap, zap. To the nearest three feet, I think it is. Boom. Oh, how annoying we didn't get to see it blow up. So just to reiterate, that was pre-planned, direct to target, no steer point, automatic terminal guidance, single fire at max range. Okay, for the second mission, a completely different use of this missile. So we are starting about 60 or 70 miles away from an airbase. On that airbase are super valuable hostile jets that must be taken out. The problem is we don't know where the jets are exactly. We just know that they're probably on this apron on this side of the airbase so what we've done is created waypoint three on this apron here but that's not accurate enough that wouldn't actually blow those planes up and we want to blow them up and to make things more complicated Kesham Island around here has SAMs that will actually shoot my slam ERs down so I've created some waypoints that I will convert to steer points for the flight paths of the missiles waypoint one waypoint two that will bend the missiles around Kesham Island as well as that I want to take out at least two of those planes so I'm going to fire two missiles and we're going to control them manually at the terminal phase so that we can obviously find where the aeroplanes are parked. We're going to go master arm on, air to ground, start the alignment of the slam ER. This time we obviously need the data link pod so engage the data link pod. We're going to designate our target which is waypoint 3, HSI, waypoint 3, waypoint designate. We have station 7 there and station 3 there. So station 7 is currently selected. We can set the missile up while it's aligning, by the way. Change it to target of opportunity. Step station 3, target of opportunity. Flight level for this guy is going to be high. Step back to station 7. Let's make it high. No reason to do that, I just want to. Step back to station 3 in this case. Set the electronic fuse up for all stations by clicking this to instant make sure you don't erase it next we're going to link our data link pod to one of the weapons initially so weapon station two station three station seven station eight so let's say station three first of all note we've got our tmr here it just so happens that we're in range of the missile because we're much closer this time and our tts here our time in seconds until it initiates its terminal phase or its terminal sensor next we need to set up the steer points to create the flight paths for the missile so with station 3 selected here select steer point currently it has no steer points within its flight block flight path it just has an end location well let's add steer point one things we can add in to that steer point are velocity location via waypoint location via lat long altitude or we could delete this steer point waypoint to make it easy waypoint one enter another steer point to be created a waypoint waypoint two 
done. That missile will now go from waypoint 1 to waypoint 2 and then hit waypoint 3. Do the same thing with station 7. Steer point 1, waypoint 1, enter. Steer point 2, waypoint 2, enter. So it's much easier with this TOO method via waypoints. Reporting back and our weapons are aligned. I'm going to put myself back to station 3 so I know which one I'm going to be launching first. Next, 2 slam display this time i want to set up the distance from the target in nautical miles at which the missile will engage its irc cap i'm going to go to ufc here i'm going to type distance press distance type in the amount of nautical miles i want from the target at which point will engage the seeker i don't know nine miles i'm going to step to station seven and do that as well nine miles enter step back to station three next release type make sure it's on manual and it is. Next, mission. Review the data. Station 3 is T001. It's a SLAM ER. It's at waypoint 3. We haven't set any terminal parameters and it wouldn't be relevant anyway because we're going to be taking control of the missile. That missile is ready to fire. Double check the HUD. It's in range. It's a SLAM ER and its target of opportunity is 66 miles. And the missile is missile away. What we actually want to do once he's about 30 seconds away is fire another missile so engage station seven check the data the data is good and fire the second missile now usually you would not be paused and you would cruise at a distance and an attitude or a direction that would allow you to keep contact with these missiles we're going we're to need radio contact via the data link pod in terms of range there doesn't seem to be a maximum range of the data link pod it appears to be line of sight which means that we need to keep it high enough so that we can see over the horizon to still make contact with the missile and i've got no way of telling you exactly what that distance is you guys are going to have to work it out by a bit of logic next we need to make contact with the missile so in our right ddi main menu data link 13 display this is how we're going to communicate with the missile at the terminal phase we can change to an aft antenna here if we were turning away from the missile now and we wanted to communicate behind us then we would use the aft antenna when we have control of the missile we can change white hot or black hot ir polarity a bit like a teapot we can also change which missile we are tracking here, which station number. This shows the distance of the currently tuned in missile as a centroid to the target. So as the crow flies, missile stun station 3 is 43 miles away and there's not much else to do apart from to prove to you they are going via the waypoints. And you can see if we speed that up. And back in the cockpit. And I'm just going to pause it there. Once we were within nine miles, it turned its center on, and we now can see the image of Station 3 missile IR seeker. We can now control it. We will need to press sensor control switch right to assign our TDC to this screen to allow us to manipulate the screen. Then to move the sensor, we will press and hold TDC depress, assuming that's how you've got it set up in special options, and this is the default as well as pressing TDC controller up, down, left and right if you're going to, have to do this on binary controls like me and we can move the seeker head about. Assign soy. Assign TDC, sorry. Press and hold, uh, depress and move it. Note how it freezes while it's moving. Uh, sorry, when you're moving the cursor. It can take a little bit of getting used to. But once you've got used to it, after a couple of seconds, it becomes easy. We're three miles away. I'm pretty happy we're homed in on that, that guy there. So remember, I'm pressing and holding TDC depress and then using the TDC up, down, left and right to move it. Now we're going to tune into the other guy. So UFC channel 7 enter. He's not quite there yet, as you can see. We've actually blown them all up, but, you know, let's just role play for the time being. Let's speed that up. Look, the smoke's still there. How cool is that? OK, so checklist. Ensure the TDC diamond is up there and it is tdc is assigned press and hold tdc depress while pressing tdc up down left and right and select a new target it turns out they're all dead so let's fire something else that guy there uh, that little building can be a little bit funny to control you just have to get used to it there you go that building there i don't like the look of his little window there so we're going to go and get it in fact let's go and watch him in shall we watch this Boom. He's destroyed, the stealth that destroyed, and our little building that we attacked was destroyed. That was showing the method of target of opportunity via steer points on a flight path with manual data link IR 
terminal guidance, rippling multiple missiles on the target at 70 nautical miles. I hope that was useful and see you later.